From over here, it might look like we had a uh, pull over to side of the road with a broken down vehicle. When in all reality, we're actually here to visit a cemetery, an old abandoned one. Now we are literally out in the middle of nowhere in Spanish Fort Canyon, Utah. Now I don't know anything about this cemetery at all. I just found out about this yesterday actually. Uh, so I suggested a, another place I go visit and throughout my research for that I found out about this place and I wanted to come visit it. So I'm going to be spending the majority of my time just filming and I'm going to put the dialogue in after I'm done videoing and I'll add in some audio when I'm putting it all together. So it's not a very long trek to get up here from the canyon road. There's the entrance gate right here. You just come up a little ways. And there's a little uh, area where you can just turn around right here. And the cemetery should be just right up there. To tell you the truth, the reason why I came here originally is because I thought it was a ghost town. Turns out it's an abandoned cemetery and it looks like it's well maintained though and I don't think anybody else gets buried here but let's go check out the rest of the cemetery okay a piece of advice though if you decide to come here to Mill Fork Cemetery Spanish Fork Utah or Spanish Fork Canyon Utah I would highly recommend not coming here in like a sedan sized car come in like a vehicle that's a little bit higher off the ground because right here at the entrance as you can see Got some deep, deep tire treads here. So if you're to come straight on in over from over here, you would probably hit the underside of your car right here in the middle there. So I recommend coming in like a taller van or like a truck or something like that. You know what I mean? And it is really, really, really hot right now. I'm wearing jeans. Usually in the summertime, I like to wear basketball shorts or regular shorts or whatever. But since we're out right here in the dry brush, there might be snakes out here or something else on my prick. Yes, yeah, so I'm wearing jeans. Here's some water down there. Oh, there it is. Right there. This little water flow. So I unintentionally found a geocache in here. A geocache is when uh, you put in GPS coordinates to like a portable GPS device. And you just go see if you can find something that's like this. You sign the log and you sign it online. I found it just right in there. See that right there? Right there. Yeah. Just running around right there. Oh, look, a more recent grave. How about that? Jeez. Look at all these ants. Jeez, man. She died right here 
1941 to 2007. So 2007 and 2011, those are the most recent graves I've seen. Look, an unmarked grave. It's kind of weird. Wow. 2011, 2007. Those are the recent ones I've seen. Elliot family. Look here. 1896, 1897, 1876, 1894, 1888, 1893. Sorry about the train in the background. Oh, geez. 1891 to 1892. Jeez. Let's see, it's back here more. There's no more back here except for on the other side of here. A lot of these graves are on the wood. They just have the names on it. They don't have a birth year or a birth date or death date or anything like that. So I don't know how old they are or how young they were when they died. This place is amazing. I love it here. This is a very good way to track history, in my opinion. And that's Even though I had different intentions when I came up here, because I thought it was an abandoned uh, city, I love coming to old cemeteries like this just because it helps, it helps with American history, you know what I mean? Not only American history, but the history of Utah, specifically because of the pioneers. All these graves are all obviously people who have died after 1847 um if you watch my last video about pioneer day you'll learn why the mormons came here to utah and and they get and you'll learn that they came here in 1847 so this is awesome born 1896 died in 1905 Myrtle. Born 1858, died 1908. I'm guessing these are some of the first pioneers to be born in this area in Utah, at least. I'm guessing. Oh, that's creepy. I know that these are initials, but look, the initials are M E. Me. What the heck? That's kind of creepy, dude. Holy crap. Oh, some more small graves over here. Someone else's initials in this tiny little headstone. Back there, Ellen Elliott, our daughter of Ian Ellen Elliott, born October 1st, 1898, died June 21st, June 25th, 1904. Can anybody tell me what, what was going on in this area at that time? Because there seem to be a lot of young children who died within a year to five and six years after they were born. Mill Fork Cemetery with the wind American flag up there. It's got all 50 stars in there, so that's good. It's an updated flag. So it looks like there used to be a town here called Mill Fork, Utah, according to this paper. But there are three, it looks like there's three mills, three sawmills here in Mill Fork Canyon. Ties were cut out of spruce, pine, or whatever was available, and it helped supply ties to the Rio Grande Railroad and two branch lines. Also, the lumber was used to build homes here at Mill Fork and up and down the canyon. Just, uh, can do like a little video of this if you want to pause the video to read what the rest of it says you can too much right here not a lot, not enough time a lot of information so if you if you can if you want to pause the video to read what it says go ahead okay it looks like you get some older headstones here 1924 right here 1921 to 1924 August 25th, 1900 to September 14th, 1900. 1894 to 1895. 
some of these other little headstones with initials for everybody on here. Now this this uh, threw me off. This looks like it's more of a more. It looks like it's a more recent grave, but it's not. 1854 to 1926. That's an almost 100 year old gravestone. Or it might have been a gravestone that was replaced. I don't know. But that's interesting. And over here too. This one threw me off. And it was even. Ooh. They both had the same de death date. Jeez, uh, probably it was an accident that happened. Ida Viola, born January 11th, 1890. Paris. Born May 10th, 1881. Both died on September 12th, 1919. I wonder if there's any accident that caused them to die on the same day. I have no, no, no idea. Now, this is creepy right here. Just right next to this grave that we were just talking about lies this locker. It's probably something to help water the plants. But it's locked by only a screwdriver. And to tell you the truth, with it just randomly sitting here with some trash cans. In a cemetery, it is kind of creepy. I'm going to back out of there. <laughs> Might be something in there that I don't want to see. You know what I mean? Well, I want to thank you for watching this video. Um, I would like to stay here a little bit longer and do some more filming, but unfortunately I have to go elsewhere to help other people out with moving. Some family members have to help them move. Not that it's a problem or anything. Um, I would like to come back here some other time with some other people to come check it out. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit patreon.com slash Chris Sarine. Help donate a dollar if you can, if and when you can. Not required to watch my channel. Not required to watch my videos. And not required for me to make my videos. Again, I don't ask for a lot, just a dollar a month. Um, but heck, that's even pushing it for me. So, only, only help pledge a dollar a month if you can or if you want to. I'm not requiring it at all. It's just there as a convenience to tell you the truth. But one, one thing I would like, like for you to check out is www.facebook.com slash group slash Famous American Stuff. That's where I'm starting to post most of my videos or share links to most of my videos. And other, and other people can come join, post their videos and post their photos in there too. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>